Hey YouTube, it's Jeff at Dark Moon Metals. Well, it's a February morning here in Connecticut. The temperature outside is 16 degrees and the wind chill factor is bringing it down to about minus 4. So, uh, it's pretty nippy outside. And, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but I can see my breath. It's about 35 degrees in the shop. So, I need to get this place heated up so I can get along with my day's activities. One of the things that I wanted to try a while ago is smelting copper in my forge. Um, I have a propane forge, don't know if it's going to be hot enough to do that. So I figured I might as well give it a shot. The worst thing that's going to happen is that the forge will add heat to the shop. So I figured today would be a great day to give that a try. And uh, if you guys want to come along for the ride, you're more than welcome to join me. All right, YouTube, it's 22 after 8. I was wrong. It's actually 30 degrees in the garage. So between the wood-burning stove and what I'm going to do in the forge, hopefully by... 10, 10, 30, I'll be able to work comfortably in a t-shirt. All right, YouTube, the first thing I want to do is share with you the design for my crucible. Now, I've seen a lot of crucibles on YouTube that are made out of fire extinguisher housings, out of propane canisters, all sorts of stuff, and I don't like the thin wall designs. This is a pipe that I TIG welded a bottom onto, and that's what I'm going to use for the major portion of the crucible. I just cut in a little bit of a pour spout. I don't know how well that's going to work. Like I said, this is an experiment. I don't even know if the copper is going to melt in the forge. Um, I think it will. I hope it will, but we'll find out together. Um, the one thing that's kind of unique to the way I design mine, most times you'll see a lug on either side. You pick it up with like a Y tool, and then you put it in another device to pour it. You've all seen these videos, especially uh, if you're interested in metal casting. There's just a ton of them out on YouTube. This is nothing more than a piece of square stock with a little bit of a stopper on the side. And what this is going to do, because this is not a big crucible, I'm going to come in with the worst pair of tongs that I ever made. In fact, this is my first pair. And I made them for holding square stock. I don't use them that much anymore. They were just kind of sitting on the shelf. And what I'm going to use them for is to go into the forge. I'm going to be able to grab the handle, pick it up, and I can manipulate this any way I want. It's not going to be too heavy because the crucible itself doesn't have a really big capacity for uh, to add more weight. So, this is, if nothing else, I hope this is useful to you in some way, especially if you're just starting out. This is another alternative to making all kinds of tools um, needed for pouring into your molds, uh, especially if you're only doing something pretty small. So, let's get the forge fired up, get some copper in here, and see if we can get it to melt. second mark. Um, you can't really see in there. It's way too bright. It looks like the pieces are starting to kind of congeal together, but it's still not liquid. So back in the forge. All right, you two. We're just at about 10 minutes and 30 seconds in, and it still looks very congealed. Um, some of it turned to liquid, but it's definitely not all going. I'm going to try it for another five minutes, and then I'm going to dump it out and see what we got. All right, YouTube. Even if I can't get the copper to melt, if nothing else, I heated the shop to almost 60 degrees. And it's uh, not quite 20 after 10 yet.
Well, I guess that experiment's a failure. Let's see if I can get it out of there. All right, YouTube, here is the copper. Um, you could tell that some of it did start to incorporate, but um, on the bottom, it didn't get nearly fluid enough to fully uh, merge into one piece. I mean, I can tell what kind of stock that is, and that was really, really thin stuff. Um, and that was at the center. <clears throat> so along the exterior, it did get hot enough to melt, but um, nowhere enough to do castings or things of that nature. So uh, in the spring, I am going to be building myself a furnace where I can melt copper down. Um, I want to be able to turn it into something that I can use, uh, even if I just make it into little ingots for Barrett to make jewelry out of or something like that. That's about it. But uh, in the spring, I am going to make the furnace, and I will film that and get it out on YouTube for people to see. But um, if nothing else, my crucible design did work the way it was supposed to. Uh, along with the tongs, and um, I hope that was at least helpful to uh, somebody. Um, you know, we live, we learn. This experiment obviously didn't work, but uh, maybe somebody out there can learn from my mistakes and maybe even adapt uh, one of my ideas for, uh, for their own forge or for their own furnace. All right, YouTube. Definitely would not call this a screaming success, but I don't consider it to be a failure either. Um, I wanted to know if it was possible, and the only way you're going to find out is to try it. Um, this isn't a waste, I'm going to throw this aside, and when I finally build myself a furnace in the spring, which I do plan to share with you guys, I'm going to take this along with a bunch of other scrap copper I have. I have this little thing that I try to make with the oxy, uh, oxypropylene torch, that didn't work very well. Copper is, is tricky when it comes to melting, because it dissipates heat so well. Um, if you look on my channel, I have a video that uh, shows me TIG welding copper. And you would think with something that fuses steel together, that focus of uh, heat would be really, really fast to melt the copper, but it doesn't. The copper dissipates the heat so quickly, you need to increase your amperage just to get the stuff to puddle. At 200 amps coming out of my TIG machine, I'm running basic beads that I can run on steel using 80 amps. Uh, you know, for the same diameter material. So copper's really, really tricky when it comes to melting. And if you don't have the right equipment, you're just not going to be able to do it. So I hope you guys learned something. I hope maybe the crucible design, for example, helped you guys out. But um, if nothing else, I did get the shop up to about 70 degrees, and I am sitting here in my t-shirt, which was ultimately the goal for the rest of the day. Um, it is just after noon. Uh, I did take a break in between filming so I had a friend drop by, but uh, thanks to the wood-burning stove, even though the forge has been off for at least an hour, we're still hovering around 72 degrees, and I get to work in a t-shirt for the rest of the day, which just makes me all kinds of happy. Um, it is right now, I think, still 18 degrees outside, and the last I heard on the Weather Channel, they were talking somewhere around minus 4 for the wind chill factor. So, yeah, I'm definitely happy with uh, with the results today. I learned something new and I've got the rest of the day to work in a nice warm shop and um, I can be productive for the rest of my Saturday afternoon. So I'll let you guys get back to your Saturday and for now this has been Jeff at Dark Moon Metals. I'll see you again soon.